quickly here too, when we're doing the, um, the Aerosmith stuff, you know, sometimes things be getting changed and all that. Uh, and we did a song called a rag doll, right? Yeah. Rag doll, da, 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 da. Yeah. Well, it was originally called rag time and it was, you know, like the rag time dancing, whatever. So and our guy, John, Verta- uh, John Claudner had come up and, he did not want it to be ragtime. It reminded me of, uh, you know, some chick on her period or something like that. So oh, oh, right, right. You've, got, you've got to change oh, this to ragdoll. It can't be ragtime. But, but, oh, but the song's done. We've mixed it. No, no. So Stephen had to go out and change all the, the lyrics and the choruses. But if you listen to the mix, we didn't change the background. So they're all still singing ragtime. Really? Ragdoll. So listen to it. The background is still going ragtime. You know what I have? I have an early demo of uh, of Do It Like a Lady. Oh, right. Instead of, instead, because they, they changed it from Do It Like a Lady to Dude Looks Like a Lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I've got the original demo of that. I don't know oh, how cool. I got it. Right I got on. it somewhere. Huh. Yeah, that's, there's, there might, you must witness a lot of changes like that from inception to final cut. My God, because there's so much work that gets done right in front of your eyes. Yeah. Less and less, I'd say more these days, just because of editing and all that. It's like it's, you don't see any of those, especially when you finally got it done. And then at the last second, like another last second thing was uh, Love in an Elevator. Uh, Clutter said, oh, we need to have a breakdown in this song. We're like, what the hell? So. <laughs> So I had to edit a breakdown. So basically that whole going down da, 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 and then the guitar solo, that breakdown, that's just the drums from the tag edited on two inch tape together to make a loop. And we just recorded some more instruments over it. So that was all done after the mix. Wow. Remix that section and edit it in. <laughs> yeah. Well, the funny, funny thing is Claudner is the guy that actually stars in the video for yeah. Dude looks like a lady. Yeah. Right? He's the guy. If, if, you, if you guys see the video, he's the guy with the the yeah. guy with the big beard and long hair. Yeah, and then to change the the drums up a bit, I put a like a delay on it so it's going to ding 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 ding. But it's basically, it's the same drum tracks from the the tag that's just added in in there. So, so I do a little Stuart Copeland. You add a add a add a, an echo on it so you get an extra hit. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, Stuart Copeland used to record with, I guess he used to use an Echoplex in those days. He'd actually oh. play to the Echoplex. Yeah. So could, yeah. And, cool. and uh, what, there, was, there was something else that I remember thinking, like, how did they play that? Because it's so perfect. And I didn't realize it was actually just an echo. With a, it's, I, I thought a guy was playing a keyboard. He's going, he's not. He's just playing one note. Yeah. He's just playing one note. You know, how stupid of me. Yeah. But yeah, but uh, also I think there's less and less of that um, in the studio creation going on because more and more people have studios like what I've got here mm-hmm. where you can actually work out all that stuff. So when you go into the studio, you're not wasting a lot of valuable time. That's you right. know, you're sort of going in. I would heard that that's why um, Steve Tyler was able to do uh, Janie's Got a Gun in, in such a short amount of time is because the pre-production was so perfect for that song. They, he knew what he was going to do down to the breath, you know. I, I guess I wasn't a part for the pre-production that would have been sort of Bruce before we came into the studio, but I will say, you know, Bruce would go home a lot of times at dinner, seven o'clock kind of thing. And we'd stay till midnight or one and, you know, whatever. So they're paying for the day anyway. So Stephen wanted to play. Okay, cool. Let's sing all these background vocals. So it wasn't taking up uh, studio time the next day when Bruce had all the other stuff he wanted to do, he could listen to all these, Oh, Great. Well, that's done. That marked that off our list to do. So, in a way, we're saving money by you know doing it after hours. You know. Well, his 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 family time was fairly important to him back in those days. He used to coach oh, yeah. his kids. He used to coach his kids' baseball team and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. So he'd so go I'll home at dinner time or something like that. He'd go home make supper and then sometimes have to coach the kids. So yeah, no, his family time was pretty important to him. You know, I mean, he loved uh, doing it in the studio, but he's really efficient man, and he, you know, got done in his eight or 10 hours, what he wanted doing. And, you know, sometimes we'd stay after, but it was just to do bonus stuff. You know, there's some, some famous stories. Charles brought up one from the old days. This is before you worked with them, but where Steven Tyler used a sugar packet for a shaker on sweet emotion. 
was is there anything like that that's been done in front of you like where, where you didn't have something so you sort of just used something else i know randy backman talks about the percussion they used the the bottom of a i think it was a javex bottle on on on, ta- on taking care of business they just beat it like a, a conga oh cool yeah to get the gallop we, we'd make a few we made a few things uh like there's a what the hell song was that we did steve and i did it uh they're called guppy plunges so then I got a credit for that, you know, on, on my thing. But um, they're basically just lip smacks. Oh, okay. When you do them, they almost sound like these weird hand claps. We did that. Uh, got a few flesh bongos in. So we'd get a couple of the dancers from, you know, number five or whoever. They'd come in and be bare-bottomed uh, congos <laughs> and stuff. So we did a lot <laughs> of stuff like that. I mean, we had all the... Uh, the percussion stuff. And I've got to tell you with Steven, with his uh, sense of time, because he used to be a drummer. Right. And that's why yeah. he drove Joey nuts. But like, I've never seen anybody like one take, he'd have the tambourine done or shakers. Like, and he had this cool thing where he would always do them in a figure of eight. And that's how he got them so perfect all the time, but try and, you know, draw a figure of eight with these two things in your hand. Like it's, I, I can't do it. And he just, you know, it was just amazing. So, you know, the, as a percussionist, it was just amazing. That's, you know, what adds a lot of the flavor to to a lot of the, their tracks is that subtle percussion stuff. But we didn't do you sugar packets. <laughs> they Were probably you? weren't allowed them anymore. <laughs> yeah, I guess not. Who knows what they would have smuggled inside of them. <laughs> hey, thanks for joining us. Check out our other vignettes and full episodes from a wide variety of guests for more great content. Please like, share, and subscribe and become a member at socialenergypresents.com to access premium content and earn valuable energy points just for watching.